there are several areas in the body where we have a transition in surface epithelium from a columnar or single cell type of mucosa into a multi-layered or stratified squamous type of mucosa. And the uh, anal rectal junction is one of them. I could probably think of a couple more, like the gastroesophageal junction, as well as the squamocolumnar junction of the cervix as well, where the ectocervix changes into the endocervix. Here is a uh, rectum and an anus. Notice that in the uh, lower part of the uh, rectum here, you normally see an inner circular a muscle layer as well as an outer longitudinal smooth muscle layer. You can verify this by the fact that you can see a mucosa here, a richly vascular submucosa here, and then your muscle layers. Notice that uh, you know that this is circular because when you look at the uh, nuclei cut uh, transversely with respect to their axis, all of the cells look, all of the nuclei look round. When you cut the longitudinal fibers or the outer longitudinal fibers longitudinally, they look spindly. But that's not what I really wanted to uh, point out to you. What I want to point out to you is that this uh, inner circular layer all of a sudden becomes quite a bit thicker. Well, that's the internal sphincter, which is smooth muscle. Notice that external to this, you see muscle fibers which are also uh, running circular with respect to the axis of the um, GI organ. And these are skeletal muscle fibers. And you know that these are skeletal muscle fibers because they have their nuclei oriented towards the periphery of the fiber, which you can see. There's not a single fiber here in which you see a nucleus in the center the, uh, the periphery. You also don't see the striations very well because they're cut in the wrong uh, plain to see striations. This is a squamocolumnar junction of the uh, rectum and anus. The precise uh, location is also called the um, pectineal, I'm sorry, uh, the pectinate line. Notice you could actually boil down the actual uh, area to a single cell because you know all of these are your columnar cells of the rectum and your uh, squamous cells of the anus. And look, here's probably the last columnar cell, and here's probably the first squamous cell right there. Notice that the uh, tissue immediately surrounding the squamous is rich in uh, lymphoid tissue, as is the uh, GI tract in general. Um, the GI tract, which we'll be getting into now, has uh, generally, with just a few exceptions, four classical layers. There's a mucosa composed of epithelium and a loose connective tissue supporting this epithelium called lamina propria. The epithelium are these single columnar cells in this case, and the lamina propria are these loose connective tissue cells and inflammatory cells uh, surrounding it. There is then a uh, theoretical separation called a muscularis mucosae, which you could see along here, which now separates this mucosa composed of epithelium and lamina propria from the submucosa, which is very, very richly vascular, loose connective tissue. The next layer is your muscularis. And then always classically beyond the muscularis, you have a layer of connective tissue, which if it uh, is intraperitoneal will be called a serosa or peritoneum or visceral peritoneum. If it is not uh, peritoneal or it's retroperitoneal it is then just called adventitia being connective tissue. I think when you're down at this level you can say that this connective tissue here is adventitia because there is no peritoneum near the uh, squamocolumnar junction. The squamocolumnar junction is also extremely important embryologically because it has a whole different set of uh, arteries, veins, uh, nerves and everything. It's basically a collision between the gastrointestinal tract and the outer uh, ectoderm. And even though it looks kind of nice and quiet, this uh, squamous area is most likely seen grossly as being very shiny and thick and leathery on the surface, 
whereas this columnar area here is generally uh, very much oozing mucin and it is going to look a lot more delicate because technically it's only one cell. The epithelium is only one cell thick. Also notice that it is not very long after you get the squamal columnar junction then you get much more than just stratified squamous mucosa. You get keratinized stratified squamous mucosa with skin appendages which is the definition of skin. So this is very much classical skin, stratified squamous, good stratum corneum, uh, hair follicle, sebaceous glands, perhaps a few sweat glands if we looked a little bit closer, as opposed to the stratified squamous non-keratinized mucosa of the anus, which does not have skin appendages. This is a classical ano rectal junction. Also note that even though there is some confusion between the true definition of internal versus external hemorrhoids, and this has been debated for many years, if you wanted to use a rule of thumb, all of the large venous submucosal structures on this side of the squamal columnar junction can be called external hemorrhoids, and all of the potentially large venous dilated structures in the submucosa on this side of the squamal columnar junction, the columnar side, could be called uh, internal hemorrhoids. Perhaps that's not the best definition, but it's a general rule of thumb. And uh, this is a very, very nice uh, anorectal junction or squamal columnar junction, and I thank you very much.